part of the double pack heat exchanger experiment, we will be measuring multiple temperatures in volumetric flow rates. In the volumetric flow rates, we have hot and cold. We also have thermal couples at different axis locations, which we will get the temperature measure. With these properties, we can calculate heat transfer rate, the overall heat exchanger coefficients, the number of transfer units, and also the effectiveness of the heat. Concentric double pipe heat exchanger is going to be ran a total of four times. Two times are going to be in parallel configuration at different flow rates, and two times are going to be in counter flow configuration at different flow rates. Uh, one flow rate, you're only going to adjust the cold water flow rate. Uh, you can run one experiment at full, and then one at about half for both the parallel and counter flow configurations. So the first thing you want to do is turn on the water valve. One on the right opens the cold water, and the one on the left opens the hot water. These valves should always be open right here. This valve is going to control the flow rate for the cold water. And the valve for the hot water should be all the way open. Just be left all the way open throughout the entire experiment. So, right now, it is set up in the counterflow configuration where cold water is going to flow in this direction. If you come through here, it's going to flow this way. Whereas the hot water is going to always be flowing in that direction. So, the two flow rates are going to be flowing in opposite directions, hence counterflow configuration. We're going to run that at two different cold water flow rate. After that, you're going to run it in parallel configuration. You're going to flip the valve. So that cold water is now flowing through here and it's flowing in parallel with the hot water. When recording data and information for the double pipe heat exchanger, make sure you take down the model number, make a model number for each of the measurement devices in the double pipe heat exchanger so that you can use it for the accuracy and precision in the data that you collected. Also, make sure you record each of the numbers thermal couples they're associated with the hot water and the cold water and in their order if you look at if, if you look at the figure one and table one in the lab manual it'll reference each of the data points thermal couples for each of the hot water and cold water points after you configure set up each configuration make sure you wait at least 10 to 15 minutes between each measurement before you actually take each measurement so that it'll actually have time to set up and be calibrated for each of the temperatures. Afterwards, make sure when you switch between each of the thermal couples to let, uh, give it at least 15 to 30 minutes, uh, not 15 and 30 seconds between each of the thermal couples so that it'll actually establish each measurement for each of the thermal couples. After you change each configuration, wait 10 to 15 minutes for it to reach the steady state. You'll notice when you reach steady state, when you switch between each of the thermal couples, that it won't be changing temperature. It might be fluctuating one to two degrees, give or take one. It usually takes about 10 to 15 minutes, but make sure you, when you switch between each of the thermal couples, wait 10 to 15 seconds for it to establish each temperature change. Also, when recording each of the data, each of the thermal couples in your data, make sure you record each number associated with each of the data.